Hi everybody, welcome back to another Steam Deck video and in this video we're going to be looking at how to get better performance, smoother performance, higher frames per second out of your games. In this example we're going to be looking at Cyberpunk 2077 using the in-game settings and in particular using the in-game um, FSR settings. You may well have heard of FSR or DLSS. FSR is from AMD and FSR will work on um, any piece of hardware where it's enabled in the game whereas uh, Nvidia's uh, DLSS only works on hardware that has Nvidia uh, graphics chips obviously the Steam Deck doesn't have a graphics chip on so if you play a game that has got DLSS on it um, it will tend to be greyed out and it won't work what both of these things do is they are kind of add-ons that are put into into games that enable them to run better in order to have a better frames per second um, and they can work like that now the steam deck also has if you press this button down here has the has the ability to use its own um, operating system level fsr as well so in games that don't have fsr built into them or something equivalent you can actually use the os version as well but it, in general, if a game has FSR built in, you want to use that. Now, in the description below this video, you'll see a link to another video I've done where I use a game that doesn't have FSR built in or something equivalent, and I'll show you how to use that to get better performance. But as we're looking at Cyberpunk today, Cyberpunk does have this built in, so we're going to have a look at kind of how we can get better frames per second. So this is the little bit of... Um, the map you get to when you just leave your apartment as you can see we've got the performance overlay at the top and if we look at this we can see that our uh, fps at the moment is running at about um, 42 frames a second so it's up up in the top left hand corner before we really get into the details though i just want to say that this here and any performance overlay can lead you down various rabbit holes that take you away from gaming and most games when you install them on your steam deck with the default settings that they set up with are fine and sometimes i think you're better off just turning off the performance overlay don't have it on and just enjoy the game for what it is <laughs> okay because chasing performance just to get an extra couple of frames per second can be quite a frustrating thing um, and varies a lot from game to game. So it's not the be all and end all. And also just because you've got a higher frames per second in a particular game. Doesn't mean that it's going to be any smoother. In fact sometimes the reverse can be the case. So let's talk about a couple of basics now. So this is the Steam Deck OLED. Um, it's got like a 7 inch screen. Um, it's 1280 by 800 um, pixels so you think well that's not particularly high but it's quite a small small screen and with the oled version it has very deep blacks very bright brights and even has a hdr version as well also it can have a refresh rate of up to 90 hertz so 90 times a second it can refresh but as you can see this game's only running at 40 Two frames a second at the moment so it's not taking advantage of all that and in fact cyberpunk really can't lots of lots of games will but this particular one doesn't now the screen on the steam deck at the moment anyway doesn't have variable refresh rate so you'll see often with monitors they'll they'll say that um or tvs they have variable refresh rate and what that means is that if the game is running at 42 frames a second or as we move around say and look around the the um, frame rate changes the monitor will uh, change its frame rate to match it so basically the when the when the um, device says right I'm changing a, a, the, the screen now changing the frame now get ready to do another one the monitor syncs up with that and the idea is that you have a smoother gameplay um, and a smoother experience but does that mean that the um, screen on the screen deck isn't any good no it means it's absolutely fantastic the way that we have to adjust the uh, frame rate on the Steam Deck is we can adjust it manually. So if we go into the settings, you can go up to here and we can actually set the frame limit here. We can go up and down. So at the moment you can see I've got it set to 60 frames a second. So it's gonna be flicking along 60 frames a second. So if you can imagine if, if the game's running at 40 frames a second and the screen's running at 60 frames a second, sometimes it might not be very smooth. You might get, um, <laughs> You don't really get screen tearing with the Steam Deck. It's very good at handling that. But it might look, look a little bit jumpy as things are moving around. Um, whereas imagine if it was variable refresh rate, they would be matching and you, and you might, not, might not kind of get that. 
Um, however, what I would say is, again, the Steam Deck screen is very, very good. And even when you do have mismatches, it doesn't really matter that much. So what you could do in certain situations is reduce the frame limit to match what the game is doing. And then that would save you battery life and you may well get a smoother experience but we'll look at that in a little bit for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually going to increase the frame limit up to 90 so it's at the full um power that the uh, steam deck can run at even though the game isn't there okay so now we're going to look at well how can we get better frames per second if we make the assumption that better frames per second is better and um, what can we do well in cyberpunk if we go into the settings we can see, and you might have to blow this up to see it, we can see that in the graphics section, there is a quick pre, uh, preset for Steam Deck. So the first thing is make sure you're on that because that's pretty good. And you could also press and hold X to run the benchmark as well. Now, one thing I like to do is I always like to increase this crowd density up to medium just so the game feels a little bit different. And as you can see, the quick preset has now changed to custom, although we haven't changed anything else. Now, this is the bit we're really interested in here, this section here that says AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.1. So this is the version of FSR that the uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is using at the moment. Um, FSR uh, 3, I think, is out now, and I think AMD have released it as open source as well. So it means that any devs can put this into the games. Obviously, depending on how old the game is and whether it has an active dev team behind it will be whether they'll go back and add in these better algorithms to do this. But we'll, we'll see if that happens. What I will imagine is that the built-in FSR that's built into the Steam Deck will probably get that at some point. And as you can see, what we've got here, if we go to the far left, we can have auto FSR, we can have quality FSR, balanced, performance, ultra performance, and then we can have dynamic resolution scale, which is kind of where we're trying choosing all of the, the settings. So, so how does this work? Well, what happens is with FSR is we, you know, I've already mentioned that the um, Steam Deck screen is, is 1280 by 800. And if we go into video, we can see the resolution there is 1280 by 800. What FSR does is it says, OK, so if we want to get better frames per second, why don't we why don't we render? This game, not at, not at the native resolution of twelve eighty by eight hundred, but let's and let's call that eight hundred p, for example. Let's let's um, render render it at six hundred p, so as you would on a smaller screen, and then let's use an algorithm to then upscale that image, that frame, um, uh, so you get the full resolution again. And then the idea is that the FSR can upscale faster than the device can actually create a new new um, new frame, so you get that benefit of it. Now, obviously, what happens with upscalers is that depending on the quality of the upscaler and how good it is, you could use you could lose quality as it upscales. But as these um, upscalers get better, such as DLSS or FSR, the quality gets better and better and better and better. And obviously, the beauty with the Steam Deck screen is because it is so small, maybe some of those imps imperfections that you would have you don't actually see them so as not you know normally um the uh, fsr is set to balance but what we could do is we could go to ultra performance and if we apply that and then we go back to the game what you should see is that we get a slight bump in performance so we've now gone up to sort of 45 46 um frames per second um and as we're moving around that that you know that could be different and you can look around and you can sort of I see that it looks looks pretty good often what you might notice is that around the edges of things you get sort of artifacting and sometimes when you move the camera you get artifacting as well the other thing we could do as well is if we go into settings we can change the amount of sharpening that's applied so we could end up with a softer or a uh, sharper image generally if you go sharper sometimes again you get artifacting around the edges of images um, of objects which you know might not be to your uh, liking and if you make it uh, less sharpening things get a little bit softer but this can be a very personal thing if you wear glasses for like reading and playing on this theme day like me then having something super sharp doesn't always make that much difference because you know i can't see the difference anyway because my eyes can't resolve it the other thing you could do as well is you could say actually could i could have quality 
Now, the difference between sort of quality, balance, performance, and ultra performance, what it's doing behind the scenes, it's downscaling, if you like, that the um, the size of the image that the game is rendering at different amounts. So if we were on, um, here we go, let's go to, if we were on quality, for example, it's, it'll only be going from, instead of doing uh, rendering the game at 800p, it will be doing it at rendering it, say, I don't know, 720p. So it only drops it down a little bit. Um, and then when you go to performance, it will be dropping it down a little bit more. And then if you go to old performance, it'll be dropping it down um, a lot more. So if we go back to uh, quality and we apply that, and then we go back to the screen... So we've dropped a little bit now. We're down at 37, 38 FPS. And if you want to do this, you know, um, in a more in-depth way, then what you would do is you would run the bench test that's in the setting screen as well and do that. But what that does is that gives you a better, sharper image. So FSR is really clever <laughs> in the way it works. And it's very, very useful indeed um, for getting better frame rates. Now, what you could do is you could go even better. If you go into the settings... And if we scroll down, we can customize these even more. And generally, in games, if you use lower settings, you will get a higher frame rate. So what you could do is you could go through all of these settings here that say high. So, for example, shadow mesh quality, turn that down to medium. Uh, distant shadow resolution, turn that down to low. Uh, decals, turn that to medium. Screen reflection, turn that down to medium. Sub safe service scattering, turn that down to medium. Mirror quality, obviously it depends what you're doing a lot of the time. Turn that down, level of detail, turn down, that down to medium. Apply that, come back to the game. And then, you know, we've had, we've, you know, we've got 40 frames a second now, so slightly different. And then if we go from that, and now we go into settings, and we go to FSR, and go from quality up to ultra performance, and apply that. There we go, we're going up to 46, 47, you know, FPS. So we're getting these little little jumps in FPS that might not seem that like, you're, like you're making that much difference, but as a percentage, you know, it's like 10%, isn't it? And it often depends on the game um, and uh, what you're doing in the game as well, sort of what's actually happening in the game that, that's going along. The other thing we could have done to get more frames per second, obviously, is we could turn down the crowd density as well. So the computer, in this case, the Steam Deck, isn't having to think about things too much that way. So we kind of talked about how to get better frame per second you know, using the built-in FSR and reducing the level of detail and stuff like that. And how, you know, with the Steam Deck, actually, because the screen is so good, even at low settings, most games look absolutely fantastic. The other thing I would ask you to consider is that... Often what's annoying when you're playing a game isn't really the frames per second, but in in drops in frames per second or changes in frames per second. So, for example, if you have a game and you're running around at, say, 47 frames per second like we are here, then all of a sudden we would get a drop to, say, 27 frames per second in a gunfight or something like that. And it, and it kind of appears, you know, it gets a bit jerky, it appears that time's slowing down sometimes. And that can be quite annoying. Um, now, for me, as long as that isn't a, um, accompanied by screen tearing, so when you kind of get the lines across the screen, I'm not really that bothered, to be honest. But one of the things you may well want to consider um, is how well a game looks and runs, actually, if you go down to a lower frame setting. So kind of let, let me kind of show you the idea here. So the idea is that we go to, say, settings, right? And we would go to, uh, let's change this back to Steam Deck so it kind of resets everything. So everything's gone back to normal. And then we'll go to, um, uh, yeah, we'll leave it on balanced. And we'll put the crowd density up to medium. So we've kind of changed it a little bit. But what we're going to do, we're going to go to the video settings. And we're actually going to put a maximum FPS on. You know, turn that on. And we've got to put a maximum FPS of 30 frames a second. So we're saying to the game, don't render more than 30 frames a second. So we're going to give the game and we're going to give the um, program, um, uh, the FSR as well, more time to render each frame. So it could be actually, we could actually go back to here and put it on quality. Okay. And then the other thing is we can go into our Steam Deck. Oops. And we could go into our frame limit and we can knock that down to 30 frames a second as well. And that way we're going to kind of be saving 
uh, battery life as well. So let's come out of there. There we go. And then if we apply that, hopefully what we'll see is when we go back to the game. Now we're kind of we're locked at 30 frames a second now, but in games like Cyberpunk 2077 that actually have very good um motion blur and i know motion blur is a dirty word a lot of the time in video games it's like oh you don't want mo motion blur on because we often we hear about like first person shooters and things like that oh you don't want motion blur because it stops you from seeing what happened then but in cyberpunk it has a really good motion blur and what motion blur does is it removes the sort of jumpiness in between frames at lower frame rates um, and it does a very good job especially on the steam deck screen where you can kind of spin around and it doesn't look jerky at all does really really good and what will happen now is the game looks fine and as we're running around and driving around the game is going to kind of stay at 30 frames a second almost all of the time unless things get really 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 busy and that will give us a really nice consistent smooth gameplay experience that you may well find in fact is as good as um, if you were trying to chase, you know, 50, 60, 70 frames a second by, you know, wh whacking the FSR up to ultra performance, turning all of the uh, settings down to low um, and chasing performance that way. So really, really do consider that. Um, and then and you can um, you might well be surprised at how well the game performs, how well um, the battery performs as well, because you're using lesser battery power because um, the uh, the screen's running lower. Uh, a lower um, hertz um, and it can be yeah it can be really good indeed so there we go hopefully we've covered a lot of the ground here i guess the final thing i should say as well is obviously is when you are chasing performance you want to make sure that um you haven't got your tdp limit on so lim limiting power um, and also make sure that you use per game profiles for all this stuff so as you make changes to the the performance menu they're going to apply to different games because different games are going to want to do uh, different things because you know you will may well be in a situation where you're at home and you want to chase you know maximum performance you want to chase sort of 50 60 frames a second in a game like cyberpunk um, and you're not bothered about battery life because you can just plug your deck in to charge it up but you may be going on a long commute on a train or a plane somewhere and you're going to want to you know whack tdp on take it down to 10 watts and then you're going to go into the settings to turn it down to 30 frames a second turn everything down to low so that you get a good couple of hours use out of your steam deck Right, okay, so hopefully that's been helpful. In the other video that you'll see linked to in the description below this video, you'll see where we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it in a game that doesn't have built-in FSR, and we're going to use the system-level FSR in order to get some more frames second. But I hope you found it useful. If you have, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And of course, I'll see you again soon.